Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Novins, and this is my virtual recreation of some of the sets found on a science fiction television show from the 1970s called Space 1999. Uh, this experience is compatible with the HTC Vive, Oculus Rift and Windows Mixed Reality headsets. I've created a home for it on a website called itch.io and I'll leave a link in the description below. To navigate this environment we will be using some of the buttons on our controller. Uh, we use the touchpad button to teleport around the scene, like this. We will be using the grip buttons here on the side of the controller to grab uh, objects in the scene. And we'll be using the menu button at the top to bring up a floating menu. And we'll have to press the menu button again to make the menu go away. Once the menu is active, we'll be using the trigger button down here to pick elements off the menu. Uh, now, admittedly, the menu is quite ugly at the moment. Um, I think I will be adding some icons to it and hopefully make it look a little bit more sexy. But generally, generally, the layout of the menu is such that there are five scenes that you can choose from up here along the top and then exit VR altogether here. And then along the bottom, we can turn the music off. Like that. And, and then here we have uh, different values of gravity. Now, this is not so relevant in this scene because we don't have many objects to pick up and throw around. But in some of these other scenes, there will be objects that you can throw around. And it's quite interesting to see the different um, effects of gravity on those objects. Um, now on the side, each scene will have different options on the side here. Uh, here we have an option to display uh, screenshots from the actual TV show. And I'll go through that a little bit later on. And then also here to show uh, to uh, show the Earth globe or the Moon globe. Um, let's turn off the menu for now and let's just look around. So here we are in the main mission. Um, this is very much a work in progress. So there's still a lot of computer equipment to put up along that uh, wall there. There's computer equipment to go there. There is a whole display that needs to be put up on the screen there. Uh, there's desks and computer equipment to be placed down here in the sunken well. Uh, there are chairs to be put up on the mezzanine. Uh, as we turn around here and look at Commander Koenig's uh, office, uh, his desk, I'm actually working on that at the moment, so hopefully in a week or so I'll have that finished. It all, it all depends on how much time I get. Um, and, and there is more furniture and desks uh, and various things to, to go in Commander Koenig's office. Now, let's just start by coming over here. Now, from the TV show, uh, there were a few shots which showed the corridor turning off to the left and to the right here. But anything beyond that, I, I haven't seen any reference. So it would just be made up stuff. And so I, I didn't bother creating any corridors down here. Maybe I'll, I'll put something in, in the future. Who knows? Um, so, so here we are in the corridors approaching the main mission. And again, let's have a look here. So I've got nothing here. Now, uh, I haven't spent any time on the lunar environment either. It's, it's just a simple texture. Uh, who knows, I may do something again in the future. So now as we enter main mission here on the left, we have a liquid dispenser. And it was interesting trying to find what all these words said. I think the only one that I was unsure about is this one here, which said thin veg. Uh, I, I actually thought it might have said twin veg. Now, the other thing about this environment, I, um, I use uh, architectural modeling software called MicroStation, and I then export that into Unity, and then I use something called VRTK, short for Virtual Reality Toolkit, to get all of this stuff into virtual reality. Um, so since I am doing this with uh, architectural modeling software, I, um, I did spend a lot of time to get this as accurate as possible. So um, it was interesting with this stair in the photos, it felt much grander, um, but when you actually see it in virtual reality, it, it feels a lot more pokey. 
So here we are up here on the mezzanine. And again, there's not much to see outside. Now I can teleport straight down here. And let's have a look at Commander Koenig's desk. As I say, there's still a lot more work to go on this desk, computer equipment and various doodads that sit on top. Um, <laughs> this little sculpture turned out to be quite challenging to get the um, precise shape of all the little squiggly spaghetti bits. Um, and I'll, I'll just I'll talk about that a little bit more later on. Um, we've got the conference table. There is uh, some scenes which have a different table in this spot, uh, but for now I'm, I'm going with this one. And the globe of the Earth, and again I'll come back to that in a second. And then here, if I go into this little corridor, you can see again I've just stopped. I have no idea what happens beyond. And then finally over here, if we look at the comms post, as, as we approach the comms post, you should hear a little bit of computer beeping happening. Uh, and that's purely proximity related, so if you go further away, it's more quiet. Uh, this is an, another difficult one to get details from screen captures of the show. But I think I got pretty close in a lot of cases. Uh, that little flip clock here was difficult. Um, the detail is so small. When I do the light baking of this scene, um, there's a lot of blotchiness in the shadows. I'll have to experiment that with a little bit, uh, a little bit more in the future. Uh, this uh, clock here, I found some reference on the internet, and it turns out that this is a clock made by Metamec. Um, and I even included the Made in England stuff that was on the original clock. These little uh, memory cards, I guess they are. Um, one of the photos shows these two, but then the rest I just sort of made up and like that and that one there. Um, I'm quite pleased with how this little computer display turned out. And clearly here I've got maybe the first three or four minutes of the episode one uh, showing on a, on a loop. Now let's get to, back to the menu. So if I bring up my menu, you can see here, and, and I won't go to that, these other scenes just yet, but um, now let's start over here, show earth globe and show moon globe. So if I just go over here to the globe, now we can interact with the globe by pressing the um, grip buttons on the side and if I grip in there I can move the globe around. Now uh, interestingly the, the TV show has got, seems to have a central axis and, and a sort of a fixing point at the North Pole so I think, I suspect the original TV show could only, um, you know, it was sort of orientated like this kind of, and I think the original TV show probably could only turn around the equator. But my version can go in any angle. Now, the other thing that I've added to this that the original TV show didn't have, well, actually, it didn't have these little markers. I put those on. But um, if here, if I go show moon globe, it changes to have a texture of the moon. Now, this texture is great, except for the North Pole and the South Pole. There's um, uh, well, you may realise, but the craters in the North Pole and the South Pole, there are certain parts of them that never receive sunlight. So the photo survey inevitably has sh sh permanent shadows, uh, and that doesn't quite look right with, with the quality of the rest of the textures, but that's just the way that it is. So so there's an, an option to change from Earth to Moon, and, and then we can go back to Earth, Earth again, and there it is. Now, over here we have show TV screenshots. So what that is about, let me turn them on. I'll, I'll look over at the rest of the scene and I'll go show screenshots. Now these screenshots are 
the, the way I constructed this environment was that I had a good close look at the screenshot from the TV show and I realized that a lot of this was built on a, on a grid. So I think these panels are um, four feet or 12, 20 millimeters wide. And supposedly it's eight feet high. So, so that knowing that I was able to draw some plans and elevations from the, the shots and, and then I started to bulk out this space. Once I had the rough proportions in, I was then able to match the perspective of my 3D model with the photos. So all of these photos are where I've gone and, and done a perspective match to be able to confirm uh, dimensions of various objects and then you know make minor tweaks to my original plans and elevations. But once I've had these uh, perspective match shots, I was then able to then put those perspectives in their correct position in the 3D environment. So the so the idea is that you can position your 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 eye, your virtual eye, at the nodal point of each of these photos, and if you get it just right, you should be able to see. Now let me just see if I'm. I think I need to get a bit closer. Sorry, this this is a uh, kind of difficult to do, but it's you have to be just at the right distance away, and and once once you get it right, it it matches with the perspective of the three D environment, and that works for each of these photos. Some of them better than others, but it's still a cool reference to have. So, so we can we can move around the whole environment and see what the original show had, uh, and also it gives you a feel for the characters of the TV show and so on. Now, I've made the back of these shots transparent, but not but not totally invisible. I, I made them transparent so that when you are looking through, let's say over here. So that when you're looking through this position, all of these other shots don't obscure the, the environment. Um, but instead of making them 100% invisible, I did put this sort of reflective gloss on it so that you can spot where they are from a distance. So let's just go here. So we've got this shot there. Now, Earlier on, I was saying the difficulty of modeling this spaghetti sculpture. And if we look at the 3D model and then the photo, you can see there's quite a good match for all the spaghettification there. And then if we go over to another angle, say this angle, there's a somewhat decent match again for the perspective. So I think I've got a pretty good representation of the sculpture in 3D space. This is my version of the door controls. Some of these um, letters I couldn't quite make out from the TV show screenshots, um, but I think I've got it close for most of them. Commander Koenig's desk. Now, this is a work in progress, as is the rest of this environment. Um, I'm working on this at the moment. I think I should, depending on how much time I get, I'll probably update the project on itch.io with this updated desk in about a week or two from now. Um, so how much I can say. I, I mean, I need to add all of the little doodads and things on top and computer equipment and so on. Uh, let me turn off the TV screenshots. So that's the desk. A little downlights. 
and then all the computer equipment. Uh, let me turn on the screenshots again. And it's quite interesting to see. So here you can see from this shot all of the computer stuff that I need to add to the wall. And then if I go over here, you can see some drama that's just happened. And then also here, uh, you can see all of the computer equipment I still need to add. It's interesting, this guy here, I think he was the main computer guy in the show, um, but he didn't have a, uh, a desk in the beginning. I think later in, in the season, he has his own desk right in the center, it's sort of a, a circular pivoting desk. Uh, the other thing too, in doing this project, you realize how the TV show changes from episode to episode. So I think after about episode four, this whole stair has been removed. So what they did is they extended that stair all the way to that wall. And so then, um, so here where we have that diagonal panel, uh, that panel ends up being in this location. And then this whole, let me turn off this. Uh, and then this whole window bank drops down 610 millimeters. Um, and then we end up having those smaller panels continuing all, all the way to, to there. Um, so <laughs> things are constantly changing in this TV show. Uh, like even the position of this desk, sometimes it's, it's in this location, sometimes it's forward, sometimes they push it right up against the stairs there, just whatever suits the shot that they need. Um, so that's why when I say in terms of matching the perspective of these shots here, um, the furniture is often not in the same location as the photo suggests because each each photo will have the furniture in, in a different spot. So I just have to pick one. Now, so this is the command center or the, the main mission, sorry, I should say. Now these other scenes contain the Eagle transporter and let's go to this first one called Rescue Eagle. And here we are on the uh, launch pad with the rescue eagle sitting in front of us. Let me go to the menu and turn off the music. And here we have some basic animation. A gantry coming out to meet the eagle. If I come in a little bit closer, you can see how it mates with the eagle. Now I've had to add this additional detail in here because it didn't make sense to me. I mean, without that, the, the original model doesn't have this. But without that, you're not getting a, a vacuum seal at the door of the Eagle. So I just had to make some stuff up where, where it wasn't logical. Um, these textures that you see here, the, the gray and the black and the, so on, um, I've, I've really only started putting those in and only, and I've, so far I've only just done it in this region. I have to, I have to do it all over the whole thing. Um, so, so that's missing. And, and then there's a whole lot of, um, you know, dirty, you know, type textures and paneling that needs to be put on this black region here, similar to what, what is happening on this landing pad part. Now, so this is the landing pad. We can teleport all around. And we can look down and look at the terminal building. Um, and so let's just teleport down to ground level and slowly move out. And we'll go right to the edge of the world. And there we have our landing pad with the travel tube coming into the back of it. Um, I haven't spent a lot of time on the travel tube. I feel like um, there's a whole lot of detail that I'll probably have to put in. Uh, but again, I haven't seen any good reference for, for what that detail looks like. Uh, let's, let's teleport onto the top of that. Here we are. And in fact, <laughs> if we put our head through you can see there's no internal detail at all. 
So that's just uh, teleport up onto the top there and make our, our way around. So again, all of these panels match this 3D model as well as I could, but as usual, there are so many different references, different scale versions of the model, and they all do things differently. So um, you try to pick the best one you can, but there's always room for improvement, I guess. The sky is the real Milky Way. I'll just see if I can find some identifiable. Well, there's um, Orion. Uh, I'm in the Southern Hemisphere, so I'm looking for the Southern Cross. Uh, there's, I think that's Alpha Centauri. Uh, maybe. Nope, I don't know. Um, okay, so back down to Earth or the Moon, I should say. Oh, actually, one of the one of the things that I added, which it isn't in the original show, I have to wait for this to come out again. Um, and then here, yeah, a bit in shadow. Now here, as this as this exits. Um, I added those little cogs and and those that as well. I'm, I may end up changing that. I, I don't know. Um, so that's that. Now let's have a actually before we have a close look at the eagle. Uh, this section here is is still you know obviously there's so much more detail that the TV show has, but there's no good photos of it. It's really difficult to to know what to model. Um, but it, it clearly had some of these posts in it, so I put those in uh, just to give scale. Now, now to the eagle. So this whole project actually started off with me modeling the eagle a few years ago. Um, I, I got part way into it and then just stalled for a, a year or two. Uh, and then VR came around and, and I finally got around to uh, completing the model. And then once I had the eagle, I then did the landing pad. And once I had the landing pad, I then did the uh, command module that you saw in the first scene. But nevertheless, here we are, the eagle transporter, as envisioned by me. Um, I did end up adding some detail that isn't in the TV show. I, I, you know, Because the model in the TV show is very small, they can't put in fine detail. But because I'm modeling this at one to one, I can. So I, I did stuff that I hope is in you know, context of the TV show, but, but isn't um, accurate, so to speak. Uh, now, the part, I'm quite pleased with how, how this particle system turned out. So I call this the engine coolant. So if we go to our menu, uh, so our menu, again, it's got the scenes across the top and then the gravity along the bottom. But um, we've got engine coolant on off and we have afterburners on off. So if I turn off the engine coolant, and I'll just get rid of the menu for now, the menu coolant disappears. And then if I press the engine, uh, engine coolant on, here we go. Quite like how that turned out. Now, the, the next effect is the afterburners. So let's get into a good position, maybe maybe about here. If I turn on the afterburners, there we go. Now, eventually, these verniers here, eventually I want them to just randomly turn on and off um, because you would obviously never turn on all four at once. It just defeats the purpose. Um, but I've still got a lot to learn with Unity and, and I need to work out how to randomize their on off behavior um but you know the the main engine stuff i'm quite happy with how that turned out if we turn that off you can see in fact let's move further away and then if i turn that on and then off 
And in fact, when I turn, when you turn it on, mm. you can see there's sort of a certain random uh, behavior on the ignition part of it. So I'll turn that off and we'll get rid of the menu. Let me just turn around. I'm getting tangled in my cord. Um, so let's have a look at some more of the detail. So this is again, you know, from the as best as I could see in the screen captures of the TV show. And so now let's move on to the on to the top. One uh, one of the things I haven't completed yet on this um, model of the eagle, probably the major thing, is the all of the detail on this this flat wall that you see here. That has a whole bunch of uh, doodads that you know just exist on the surface, which I haven't modelled. So. And on the front as well, so that's something I one day I'll get to. Uh, and and likewise here on the flat surface there, there's all this you know detailed greeblies that need to be added. Um, it was interesting this this connection piece here. I saw about two, or maybe even three different versions of that on the different screen captures of the eagle from the TV show. Um, this whole engine assembly here, season one, season two, they have a very different. Uh, way of combining it. I, th I think that ho that whole strut there is missing in season one. So this is probably more a season two eagle, I think. Um, and then I, you know, I, I added the detail, uh, you know. That, that end piece, you know, that big tube, and then so those end pieces are just made up. I never really saw what the original show had there. Uh, this connector piece, I, I again, I figured in in real life, you know, that would be made as light as possible. So I um, made it into this truss structure, which the original show didn't do that way. Um, these coloured stripes, again, each eagle seemed to have different combination of stripes. Uh, I don't have any detail inside, inside this uh, rescue pod. Um, we can have a look inside, but there's nothing in there, really. And then... Here we are in the nose cone. Um, I feel like I could probably do a better job with that. Model something more intricate, I'm not sure. And then there's probably a whole lot of dirt and things, stuff that I could add. Um, this, this as well, I added my own little bits so I, I carved out some of the volume to make the whole thing appear lighter again I'll probably have to add a whole lot let me to the port I'll probably have to add a whole lot of detail to that flat bit there. And there's the connector piece to the eagle, to the nose. Now if we go inside, and so that's just some of the decals on the side of the eagle. The model eagle, I don't think, has those pieces in it, but some of the studio sets, the big sets where the actors come out of this door, that is in place, so I put it in. 
Uh, now, let me just try to teleport inside. Oh, maybe I'll do it this way. Oh. Uh, my teleporter is set for too great a distance. Here we are now, we're inside. And yeah, as you can see, there's no detail. Um, but we can, so this is going towards the back of the eagle, so I can I can put my head through that. There's one of the doors, and then there's the other door. Oops. <laughs> I just walked into my real door. Um, so this is the, the rear compartment. I think. Yep. And here we are. As I put my head through this thing, we're now looking at the whole engine structure. Let's go back towards the front. I just need to untangle myself. And again, I'll just go into this space. And then through here will be the eagle nose cone. So here, this is the, the curved part of the eagle. And here we are inside the nose cone with no detail at all. So if I just teleport out, there we go. So this is the uh, rescue eagle, which is characterized by those red stripes. And now let's go to the VIP eagle. Here we are on the launch pad. Um, most of these scenes, um, the lighting is not dynamic. It's, it's pre-baked. And um, I think I've got some funny things happening with the ba baked shadows. Um, it might be, I, I don't know what it is. It might be a bug with the uh, light baker in Unity. Um, but I'm getting overlapping texture coordinates. Um, but anyway, nevertheless, the here we are with the launch pad lowered somewhat and the eagle has its central uh, pod uh, removed to show that to show its modularity and 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 th this is the bit that I, I said I have to add more detail to um, but there's the doors and and likewise there now over here I've, I've, I've allowed the nose cone to pivot down as though it was under some sort of maintenance. Um, and so that gives a good view of the, the door connecting to the eagle. Now, again, this is the continuity issues with the, the TV show. The models of the, t of the models of the eagle have a square door there, but clearly the interior sets have a door-shaped door there. So for my model of the eagle, I did a a door-shaped door instead of a square one. Um, in fact, let me just teleport down to there. Here we are. So this is a circular or curved vacuum seal that engages with that there once, once the thing tilts up. Let me turn off the music. And here is our VIP module. Okay. Uh, and then I've started to populate it with various bits from the TV show again. So the idea is that this can be pushed up against the eagle when, when the module is in the up position. Um, now, let's have a look at this stuff here. So these are those space age containers that are in the TV show. And this is where the gravity comes into play. So if I go to my menu, um, you can see here there's no options for other things here. It's just the gravity in the scenes. But by default, the gravity is set to lunar gravity, because why not? Um, and so if I, with my grip buttons, grab one of these items, I can then throw it 
and it behaves as per lunar gravity. And, oh, I almost got it. Um, but the interesting thing is you can change it. You can change it to no gravity. So let's just take this and throw it. So there we have no gravity. Or we can set it to Earth gravity, and there we go. So if I throw this up, it all behaves as though there's Earth gravity. Um, and then we can try Jupiter gravity. So if I throw this off the edge, uh, Jupiter gravity. And then we can go really crazy and pick sun gravity. And this is going to be interesting. <laughs> okay, try again. Ugh. One more. Let me teleport over there. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay, as hard as I can. <laughs> That's sun gravity. Um, so over here we've got a whole stack of them. So if we turn gravity back to no gravity, it all and and so you know we, we can we can come over here, take this and just throw it in and cause havoc. Come over here, set this to sun gravity, <laughs> and here you can actually see where the physics engine in Unity um, <laughs> it couldn't handle the time slice of as the, the thing was moving so fast it partially intersected the floor. Now we're back to normal. So if we go back to lunar gravity, uh, but lo lunar gravity is my is the most fun. Actually, no, gravity is fun as well. But it's quite amazing how uh, your coordination is totally off. Like, if I try to throw this at that, it's you either throw it way too soft or way too hard compared to if you set it to Earth gravity, where, you know, our intuition is much better. So if I Go to throw that. Yeah. So this is the VIP scene. Um, let's see if I can. If I can. Oh, so that, that took me up here. I think I can teleport through the. Yeah, here we go. And so now we're looking at the carnage that we created. I'll teleport up onto the roof. Oops, no, I missed it. Here we go. And we get to see what's happening below. Now, let's go to the next scene, the hangar scene. And in fact, let me even turn off the music once more. So this is the landing pad, as you've already seen. But in this case, the landing pad itself is animated to go down. And eventually, this will go down into the hangar. Um, but I haven't modelled any of the hangar yet, so um, the elevator will stop it at some point and then and then come back. So I call this the hangar scene because eventually there will be a hangar below underground, but at the moment there isn't one. But still, it's pretty cool to see if if I come over and and look at this whole thing from above. It's kind of cool to see it all come up. Yeah. 
and fifty four uh, gravity. And lunar gravity. Now the color difference is, oh, you don't see so much there, but you can see here the color difference between this movable launch pad and, um, and the fixed one beyond. That's because this is using dynamic lighting and that's using the fixed baked lighting. And there's a difference in, in the color. But theoretically it should be the same. Um, let's have a look at the next scene, the studio model. This is a cute one. I like this one. So this has all been scaled down uh, so that the eagle there is 44 inches, which is the size of the um, original full-scale model that they used on the TV show. Uh, now, they did have this size model, 44 inches, uh, and then they had a half-scale, 22 inches, and then I think they had an 11-inch one, and maybe even a 5 inch one I'm not sure I, I think they did um, now we can pick this up and and look at it from all different angles now if I bring up my menu and I change the oh, so here we have some different options uh, one of the options here is reset eagle position. So you do that and and it resets. Now the reason that that's important is if you accidentally do that, the eagle is gone forever. Um, but if I reset the position, there it is. Now the funny thing happened on the way to the shops. Um, the eagle position is reset, but the eagle momentum is not. So, so for instance, uh, come on. So if, so there's the eagle. So if I reset the position now, it didn't, it, it you can see it had that slow uh, momentum. At the moment, there's no momentum on that. So if I reset the position, you can see it, it's almost, starts off perfectly still. Um, now, I should reset the momentum as well, but it's kind of cute having the momentum surprise you. So if I go reset now, it, it does that. Now let's, so that's resetting the position. Here we have the engine afterburners on and off, which you know from before. So, so that's just that. Uh, now you can see I, I didn't do it for the verniers, I just did it for the, the engine. And, and they don't actually have any physical thrust. It might be cute if I give it thrust so it goes off. But I haven't done that yet. Um, so we can just turn off the afterburners. Now here on the, the left side, now before I do that, let's just set gravity to zero. Come over here. And let me just grab that and position it maybe there. And so here we have crew module, which is what that is. Rescue, and it changes to rescue. We've got VIP, changes to VIP, and we have hide all. And, and this is, I like this one too. It, um, it, it lets you see some of the interior detail. Oh, 
let me turn off the music. And there's the animated landing pad, launch pad, along with the animated gantry. Now if I reset the position of the eagle, there it is. With that slight momentum that it had over there. And that's it for now. Uh, as the main thing that I'm working on at the moment is in this scene, this first scene, the main mission scene. Uh, and then eventually I'll get to adding more things to this stuff. It all depends on how much time we get. And so here you can see 44 inch studio model. And that's my email address. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.